day everyone and welcome to obedient family tv the program na hope alive yes hope day for people that believe that a new nigeria is possible reports where they come out from niger state suleja precisely no day too healthy then talk say soldiers open fire on protesters the people will be say the economic hardship is biting and now going over trucks that are crossing by from Abuja going to Kaduna and everywhere. And they are now, you know, scavenging, trying to get food for themselves. But they are called hoodlums. And, but we are, we are waiting to get a number of uh, casualties that are going to come out from here. But what the reports coming from there, and as we can see from different videos that are trending, is that even the police were all there watching as the hungry Nigerians who are now scavenging for food are now being uh, in, uh, assaulted and humiliated across board. This one will carry and come. Then we have the issue of um, the former spokesman of um, uh, uh, Atiku Abubakar, known as Daniel Buala, who had mandated APC and Tinubu supporters to come out and speak for him, or else they should remain silent. And they have started speaking. Then we have the, the, you know, the residents of uh, different cities like uh, Kwara State and uh, other adjoining states coming out on this same hardship protest, as you can see. A counter-protest awaits. Plus, we have the 30 billion naira that is said by the, uh, that the Senate President uh, Goswila Abio spoke about yesterday that the state governors have been giving uh, 30 billion naira for palliatives which uh, the state has not disbursed or has not um, get it across to their citizens. All this will bring to you plus what uh, Tunubu's administration uh, plans ahead. Not be only me go talk all this one. I get divine for studio. Thank you for joining us this evening. You're welcome to today's show. Yes, as you are coming on the show and we are about to discuss very crucial things that are happening in Nigeria, we will invite you to like and share this video on this uh, set so that other obedience worldwide will know that Obedient Family TV is here again to talk to Nigerians and every other person across the world on what is happening in Nigeria. So let's start with what happened in um, Suleja about this truck uh, that is passing through to Kaduna and at the roundabout we can see a whole lot of people gathered around there to see if they can get some food for their families uh, but we can see that they were harassed by the soldiers though the talk has been about um, uh, a fire or I mean opening fire and all that but we have not heard about any casualties so we assume the fire they meant has to deal with probably shooting on the air and all that well, um, whether they were shooting at the protesters or rather at the um, people scavenging for food or whether they were shooting um, in the air, it's, it's not, um, you know, the major or, or rather the main point because the point is that um, the APC-led government has reduced Nigerians to beggars and scavengers who now, you know, um, you know just waylay people on their way to deliver different um, foodstuffs and try to see if they can get a part of it. And it's just really sad to see because um, we've gotten to that point in the Nigerian economy where people now waylay trucks or foodstuffs trying to see if they can get. And it's just sad to see because till when does this stop? Because after they finish consuming the one they've collected today, what do they do tomorrow and the day after when they need more food? Is that what we're going to do to, um, you know, erase this food insecurity yes we can see even uh, the same place where people are scavenging like uh, divine said uh, even the ride that is on the floor not minding the sand that is around there we can see that people are scavenging all across nigeria the hunger is biting hard and then we had a senator by the name of uh, indume senator indume precisely who actually said that Nigeria's problem is not hunger, that there is enough food in Nigeria. Let's take a listen to that before we go ahead. Difficult for Nigerians at the moment, Senator. Yeah. I'm so sad that our people are facing this kind of crisis. Yeah. But if you look at it also, it's all over the world mostly. 
the issue, the economic hardship is, is global for so many reasons, especially when it comes to issue of food. The war in between Ukraine and uh, Russia, and also the crisis in the Middle East, all is affecting our own economy. The world is global. That is part of it. And also, you can see in Nigeria, too, we have this uh, difficulty. But I, I, I want to say here that the problem is not that of the president alone. The president is the head of the government. People should come forward to suggest the way forward or out of this problem. Not just concentrating on critics. And there are those who disagree with you, Senator, when you say that uh, it's not a Nigerian problem, it's a global problem. There are those who will say, um, uh, we will blame this government that things have become so bad. Would you say it's a global problem, the, the FX, the do dollar to the Naira? Do you know what dollar has sold to the Naira today at the, at the, the parallel market? There are those who will say that some of the policies that have been criticized by this government, I mean, policies of this government have been criticized that there are wrong policies that have been made that have led us to this. In eight months, nearly everything in terms of indices have gone in the negative and double numbers. Well, let me take it one after the other. First of all, when this government came on board, on board before then, the major issue is the amount of money the government was spending on what the so-called fuel subsidy. And even the opponents, or well, that is to say opposition, were of the view, including maybe yourself, that the fuel subsidy should go. But of course it comes with consequences. I can accept the fact that the backlash of that decision was not well thought out and the reaction. But the good thing I can say here without fear of any contradiction is that the president is reactive. When things happen like that, immediately he sent supplementary budget to the National Assembly, which 500 billion was allocated for palliatives. But as we said, it's just like a, a drop in the sea. After that, he tried to reorganize the social investment uh, program and also pumped money into it. But then it's not still working. After that, the president recently come out to order for the release. Food is not the problem of Nigeria, but we can see with our own eyes on every city and uh, state in Nigeria where there is hunger and hardship. And everybody is seeing it. But here we see a serving senator of the Federal Republic who had to say that food is not the problem of Nigeria. Let's take it from that very context. Well, um, we've seen what he has to say. As one, once again, they are tone deaf um, because he said maybe he's making um, an assumption that food is not a problem of Nigerians. But I beg to differ because I don't think it's even an assumption. Nigerian politicians are just, you know, very used to gaslighting and manipulating um, Nigerians because you can't tell the average Nigerian man that the problem of Nigerians is, or rather Nigeria, is not food insecurity when it's something that they face on a daily basis. Speaking of FX and, um, you know, for subsidy, yes, we knew... Um, you wanted to remove the um, four subsidy or rather the subsidy on petrol and all of that. But at what cost? What is the cost of um, this to Nigerians? Because if you're going to remove the um, subsidy on petrol, you should have um, other plans to, um, you know, alleviate the suffering that it's going to bring. But from the looks of it, these people just went ahead and removed for subsidy, did whatever they could do with the forex, um, foreign exchange policies. And it's just, you know, clamping down on the average lifestyle of the average man because now everybody's hungry. And sitting there in your high horse or rather in the comfort of your zone, of your house and having all the millions you get from, you know, politics and just opening your mouth to say food is not the problem, it's just very tone deaf and it lacks empathy. Yes, and uh, talking about uh, that very uh, removal of subsidy, right. Tinubu knew, knew from inception that... Uh, that uh, removing subsidy is going to hurt Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I will take you back to um, January of 2012. Yeah. Bola as opposition leader then, rallied his economies and got them to tell him the implication of full subsidy removal. They wrote it for him. He read it and liked it. He signed it and put his name on it. 
conscious of the verdict of history, of posterity, and for emphasis, he got it published. One and a half pages in his own newspaper, The Nation, of January 11, 2012. Check the newspapers, page 43 and 44. The grim summary of Tunubu's economics damning opinion was that if petrol subsidy was withdrawn in Nigeria, the poor would stop breathing and the rich would suffer. The prophet's exact words, that Tunubu's exact words, there will be less food, less medicine, and less school across the land. More children will cry in hunger. More parents will cry at their children's despair. Poor and middle class consumers will spend the same amount to buy much less. The volume of economic activity will drop like a stone toes from a high building. This is exact word of Chief Bola Tinubu as of 2012. Now, 11 years after what he has turned out to be an accurate reading of the future of Tinubu, this same Tinubu, the man who signed the prophecy, somehow became the de facto president or the said Asorok occupier and proceeded to feed to the nation what he had pronounced as poison a minute after swearing an oath to work for the welfare of the people chief tinubu became a victim of his own prophecy so what really happened you think he did not know the implication of ignoring this he did was it sheer self-destructive wicked wickedness again I would say no. So why? The truth is, election alone does not make a president in Nigeria. The presidency is the election and affirmation. Our votes are subject to affirmation by the kingmakers in London and in Washington. That we know. The principal does not appoint an agent so that the agent will be master of himself. As opposition leader, Chibola Tinubu could independently hire economic advisors who told him the truth. Now, as a sitting president, as he is now in Nigeria, he cannot and dare not choose advisors whose views are at variance with the kingmakers, those in London and Washington. He's, the president is endorsed to act strictly on the script as given to him by these film directors in Washington and in London. The script writers are the choice makers. They are the double monsters headquartered on Pennsylvania Avenue, uh, Avenue and Washington, D.C. Mm. This is very, very clear that he's playing a script. We have known right from the time when we said Tunubu's file should be exposed from the U.S. You understand? Right. So those people over there, they know what they are doing. And we understand it. We know when the International Monetary Fund was very clear on removal of subsidy. They know the impact is going to have on Nigerians. But what plans do they have for us when they make sure that Tinubu had to act on that script? Um, well, speaking of which, we can tell that, um, you know, at the risk of sounding like we're exonerating, um, you know, Chief Bola Tinubu from the woes of Nigerians, we can tell that um, the situation that is going on, he's um, like another pawn in their game of, um, you know, chess, right? From the looks of it, I, I know we said Nigeria got independence since 1960, but it looks like we're not totally independent of um, the whims and um, caprices of these colonial masters. Um, last week, Femi Falano, senior advocate of Nigeria, um, had asked um, Tinubu to stop obeying the IMF. He asked him to reject the IMF's latest advice, asking him to further increase the prices of fuel and electricity in Nigeria. Well, we all know that Falano will not get a response from him. Um, the um, presidency will obviously ignore him because the senior advocate ought to know better. The Nigerian government cannot glare down the behemoths who hold the knob of life. That is um, their ogre at the top. Because we know that no pro president that has ditched the IMF and the World Bank has slept well since the two were born in Bretton Woods in 1944. If you know you won't sleep with them, 
do not take their money and power. If you can't run um, errands, never, you know, apply and accept to work for them. The presidency of Nigeria, as we can tell, is not a de pa um, detached powerhouse, but rather it is some people's gatehouse. And um, we can also tell that um, Nigeria is also um, at the, um, you know, mercy, or rather the leaders of Nigeria are at the mercy of um, you know these people who lead them, or rather who um, they are, they are, or who they borrow money from, right? So we'll be asking Chief Tinubu to hate himself if we insist that he spawn the orders of those that give life to his government. If we would ask anybody to say no to the IMF, definitely will not be this president because um, his bones are weak, and we should also leave him alone. Why can't we make the um, rejections ourselves? Because after all, a Yoruba adage says that a man has to use his own mouth to reject the meal. And um, from all of this that came, uh, we saw going on in the north this last week, um, there was a regional threat to the president by traditional and religious leaders. They said um, their people were hungry and restive and they could no longer control them. And it just goes to show that... Um, they're not being taken very seriously because every sentence they uttered, they uttered sounded like um, threats of, um, you know, a Magidon or rather an apocalypse coming. But um, their concern would have carried weight if these shelters had done so or maintained the same energy when Muhammad Buhari was in power and messing up everyone, everything and um, everybody. But they maintained complicit silence and, you know, passi passivity when the evil reigned because of the past um, unholy silence. It's hard for Nigerians now or rather people from other regions to take them seriously and right now um the um situation of nigerians are very is in we're in a very precarious situation and it is literally nasty brutish and so i'm um, short rather every um home sobs and um the evil from the um current administration we can see and we can feel firsthand the evil these people are meting out we see um the skyrocketing prices of goods right rice was seventy thousand naira last week but currently it has skyrocketed i think a um, new market survey post to tell us that um the current bag of rice is retailing at um i think a hundred and something thousand and it's just sad to see both dollar is retailing at over 1,800, if not one cent, um, you know, um, price we saw was 1,920. And before the weekend gets um, done, we are going to see 2,000 naira. We can tell that this is not going to be the end of it. Everything is just, you know, worse. And um, we still have minimum wage being 30,000 naira. So if you put it in juxtaposition, seeing, um, you know, 30,000 naira, um, naira minimum wage and having a bag of rice retail for over 100,000, you can see the plight of the common man. And yes, see the and sadness. with all of this happening, you wouldn't expect expect that people will not go out in the street to stop a truck that is moving past when they see food items in the truck right you expect that they will not try to hijack the truck and get food by the table so you can go to the comment section and uh, look at it from the perspective that you see it and um, please do share like so that other opinions will know what we are talking about. The problem started from day one. You can't just wake up from one morning and say you are removing subsidy without having plans on how you are going to deal with this. That is where all of this started. Chasing uh, BDC, that is the, the period the change, uh, people who change dollars everywhere around the country, will not still solve the problem that we are if you like put all of them in jail they are not the one who has control of how money of how dollars come in on how dollars go out of nigeria but uh, we see that some people are really supporting uh Chinubu and they think that the hardship is not yet set in let's take a, a look at what Boala said about supporting Tunubu, this same Daniel Buala happens to be somebody who has condemned Tunubu's uh, um, uh, regime right from start, who had opposed his candidacy right from the one. But now he is coming after to talk about people should start coming out for Tunubu. This is what he has to uh, say, what he wrote on um, X. Well, he said, um, if you are a supporter of official, um, but that's um, the official handle of the president, or you are his appointee in whatever capacity, or you are a member of his party, which is APC, or you are a believer in his vision, or a lover of Nigeria, that it is important that um, this is a time we come out and speak for him in a place.
appealing to Nigerians to be patient in these hard times of reform agenda. There are enough facts and figures to support um, his efforts. Well, I beg to differ. He also mentioned that we should stop the ducking and dodging because of possible backlash, insults, and criticisms. He said true loyalty is defined by sacrifices and commitments. No glory without story, no gain without pain. We are all patriotic citizens in this effort together. He went further to say that the truth is that there is no money to defend the Naira and subsidy at the same time, that there is an economic angle to the IMF policy that advocates for strong country ownership, meaning teller guides to the implementation to suit your local circumstances and not to be bullied by IMF, which explains why part subsidy is returned. Citizens are encouraged to call out any area of corruption and mismanagement in governance affairs. Um, PBAT is ready to take action against any person found culpable. Companies and organizations benefiting from tax breaks are called upon to contribute monies, food, and healthcare needs at this difficult time to the vulnerable and to the society because times are really hard. And he mentioned that there are enough evidences about um, countries that have had somewhat downtrend because of this type of forms and bounce back. Well, it was just a lot of, um, you know, about that as she was spitting because I, under I don't understand why you're calling on corporate organizations to start doing donations to, um, in his own words, vulnerable citizens. This is something that the government should, of the day should have um, gone back to the drawing board with their ministers and commissioners and see a way to, um, you know, um, alleviate the suffering of the masses. But well, he's just, you know... The, the point is that this Daniel Boala happens to not to be a spokesman uh, of uh, Tinubu, right. if, if I understand correctly. And uh, Boala happens to be somebody who has opposed his candidacy, who never believes in what he does now, uh, he is turning back on his boss, which happens to be Atiku Abubakar and the PDP, but now asking all the people to rally around uh, Chief Bola Tinubu in support of the hardship that is ha happening to Nigerians. So let's assume that uh, he's already in APC, which he had vehemently opposed, and he's asking his people now. Look at the take from the people of um, Bola Tinubu from Bayo Ananoga, who, uh, uh, who is a spokesman or strategist of Bola Tinubu, who is now advocating that uh, there are people uh, that is in the drug, um, the manufacturers in Nigeria are being uh, solicited by the president, by Bola Tinubu, to make things happen. Let's look at the tweet of um, Bayo Ananoga. What he said there uh, will really um, make you uh, look at, you know, make you <laughs> be surprised on what is happening in this um, country. Well, while we wait for the producers to put up the tweets, um, the summary of the conversation was that um, Yunus Atanko, which is the um, Minister of State for um, Health, they asked him um, questions. Not Yunus Atanko. Uh, is a Minister for State, but uh, Yunus Atanko happens to be of uh, PDP, uh, of um, Labour Party. Okay. Uh, so the Minister of Health uh, for, uh, is Minister what of State tweeted. for Health. Yes. But I know he was asked the question, right? Um, sorry for the, um, you know, mistakes. But the point was that he was asked them um, that what are uh, the plans in place to have, um, you know, the reduction of the prices of drugs and all of that. And, you know, he just went on this long spree about how the government is doing this and doing that to make sure um, that the pharmaceutical companies um, reduce the prices of drugs. And to be very honest, um, when the tweet is put up, you realize that it was a whole bunch of nothing. One of those, you know, big theories that they put out, but we have no, that has no pragmatic value you know um, value in the real sense of it and so that was what he was just talking about and it's just sad to see because we're not just talking um, subsidy we're also talking um, increased health care or rather the prices of drugs currently it's just very um, you know sad to see the average man is hungry and then we're still now adding bad health care or rather increased um, you know um, increased um, prices of um, drugs and pharmaceutical okay, uh, products. Okay while we wait for that tweet to come on let's hear from this uh, Save Nigeria group, uh, the young man who said that this very hardship is not going to stop now. Now, people think it's a short-time solution, and why people look at palliatives, that palliatives may never and can never run an economy. Let's take a listen to the young man who said he's talking from the wilderness. Let's take a listen. 
Nigerians, please listen to me because this is like the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. As you can see, now even for wilderness, I did they do this video. I just want to let you know, my country people, say you see all this wahala way there for country. Hunger, people, they cry, people, they die, inflation, everything. I just want to let you know, say it go still get worse. This suffer go still increase, oh. This is not the end of suffer head, my dear people. You see this dollar away with the shout, so it go reach 2,000, it go pass up. Fuel go still reach 1,000. Some people from places go buy a more than 1,000 self. It go still, they go up. This one where some people don't defend, some people, more people go still faint. In fact, that one where faint, that the way they give us more food, make it chop. If they do not follow up, so no who go give them food for the coming days, it go still refaint. Even myself, I feel faint anytime. I'm God forbid. That is why I just want to let you know that as a people, we must make the right decisions. We must know exactly what to do. What we are experiencing today is the consequences of election. Elections have consequences. And if we do not address the root cause of the problem, we go to pursue the symptom. At the end, we not go achieve anything. That is why I don't want us to go the same mistake where we make during answers. That time at the shout, at the do video, but because nobody know me, nobody could, could take me serious. The one with the talk, answers, the two, answers. Government say we have ended SARS. We have opened SWAT. At the end, see how it ends. We must come to the knowledge and realization that the mama way born bad government is a bad electoral system. What are we doing concerning that electoral system? Remember saying a high neck carry us rich for where we did today. What did they do concerning high neck? Opposition lawmakers, PDP, Labour Party, Labour Union, civil society, non-governmental organization. What are we doing concerning high neck? Because let me tell you, the fact say country had no means say the not still rig election again. Oh, they play. The dollars to take rig elections, politicians go see them. Now they won't make country better now they know they see. Because today now we don't they call say, oh, let us protest, let us do this. I am not against peaceful protest. I'm not saying we should make demands. But my fellow Nigerians, I want to ask you a question. Who are we calling upon to come and fix this country? The same people who put you in a problem, night you they call to come deliver you. We play too much in this country. Let me tell you. To fix the current situation where Nigeria did, it will in, it will need a complete system overhaul. That system overhaul cannot happen with this current set of political elites. It will not happen, I can guarantee you. Because see, to fix the issues of Nigeria, made this offer start to calm down, we must tackle the issues of corruption where they government. No government that is interested in fixing Nigeria would have passed the kind of budget that the government passed for 2024. A budget of renewed hopelessness. A budget of advanced corruption. It is not about president standing and making statement that the subsidy regime is over. Since the day where president made that statement till today, nobody don't rest. Nobody don't sleep close eye. Nigeria, we did not even have any honeymoon period with this regime from the one so far ahead till today. The main question is, is the corruption in the oil sector over? Today, who is minister for petroleum? The president. For us to address these issues, let me tell you, we must fix the corruption in government. We may need to shut down National Assembly. We may need to shut down part of presidency. We will need to go back to the Buhari administration. Not be only a mafia, the way everybody they shout to. Everybody who served in that administration and the role that they played to hold them accountable. We must fix the issue of insecurity so that Nigerians can begin to go back to farms and increase our local production. My dear, to achieve all of that is a long term process so while we they talk they shout for that one we must fix this system that gives birth to this kind of political class if not we are only setting ourselves up they can rig themselves back into power and our suffer head will continue my people shall suffer no they tire us shall we we won't use all our life to protest for nigeria Ha, my dear country people, make we better open our eyes, shine and wear well, well, because this sofa goes. So, ah, this one, uh, real uh, frustration everywhere. Frustration everywhere. But anyway, as uh, Divine Tech Talk, let's look at Bio Nanuga's tweet and what uh, they want to show us. Let's take a listen or let's take a look at that very tweet coming from the presidency. He said, the question he asks is, what is the federal government doing to bring down the increasing cost of drugs? 
whether uh, Tinubu won't begin dive into pricing in drugs, I don't know. Instead of talking about production and manufacturing sector. Now, the answer he said is Health Minister of State, Tunji Alausa. Yeah. Now, he said, the government is doing a lot. Bola Tinubu is very committed to getting to the end of this problem very quickly. As we know, the president made a lot of campaign promises to revamp, improve, and put the healthcare system of Nigeria on a sustainable pathway. As we can see, Mr. President is meeting a significant chunk of his campaign promises, and he is going to meet all of his promises. This is the first president in the history of our country that has given so much support to the healthcare sector. Let me even stop here, uh, Divine. It's really annoying. People should go and read what is coming out from the presidency, that he is meeting his campaign promises, right. that he's, he, uh, he's the first president to have done so much in the health sector. When we see Koro Koro, that the people who are producing drugs in Nigeria are living. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we see um, a lot of, I don't know, would I say delusion? Because when these people come out to make bogus claims like this, oh, we're saying Mr. President, um, you know, he's, um, um, you know, fulfilling a large chunk or a significant chunk of his campaign promises. It begs the question, was, were there even promises to start At with? all? Because um, from the beginning, this man did not tell us anything. He didn't give us a blueprint. All he told us is that it's his turn. And so when you come out to say things like, oh, he budgeted a lot of money. He's giving um, a lot of support to the health sector. The same health sector where the um, nurses are protesting every day concerning the um, new um, what's it called certificate verification process is just very I don't know it, it, it makes me wonder whether they think Nigerians are fools or rather we don't know the true situation. How foolish do they think we are? Because why would you say he's, um, you know, it's just annoying to even read because even while I was going through it, I just knew this was just a bunch of rubbish this man was saying or rather this man was saying. Speaking of the prices of drugs, what are you doing to curb the um, um, rising cost of um, drugs? But you are saying a lot of, you know, gibberish and just speaking, oh, he's... Um, he's um, a whole minister for just, state just on health speaking see. about campaign promises. I, I mean, like you said, uh, Nigerians know there is no... Promise has not been given, but coming from uh, the, 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 the voice of the presidency is really appalling. But you can go to Bayo Nanuga's tweet and then see the backlash, see what people are talking about all of this. And most importantly, what also makes me wonder sometimes is what is really going on with NMPC. Mm. The NMPC and the Orlando and other things that are coming, that is from where Nigerian money is coming from. Mm. We know that Chinubu had mortgaged all of this. Mm. And I, I got a video of um, where uh, uh, one uh, barrister, should be Oshoma or something like that, right. who had opposed us during uh, the campaign season. And even while we were in court, uh, um, on the outcome of um, uh, the yeah. court process then. But now I see him talking something that made some sort of sense to me. And I want our viewers to see this perspective of the NMPC uh, Limited and how the money and the transparency in NMPC is being hijacked by Chibola. Let's take a listen. Transparency increases credibility and accountability, for a lack of it often results in distrust and a deep sense of insecurity. How transparent is NMPC Limited? It would be like saying that one week, one trouble for NMPC Limited these days. In the course of the week, after the federal government requested payment of proceeds from purchase of crude for local consumption directly to the Central Bank of Nigeria, the limited liability company on its own came out again recently to say that after a careful review, it can no longer complete the legal major of NMPC Retail Limited and OVH Energy Limited within the expected time frame for the major. At least that's fair enough. Now, petitions are flying and people are asking questions. Who is OVH Energy Marketing Limited? I beg, since you they buy fuel for Nigeria, you don't hear of any Philly station where they bear that name. Well, them say OVH Energy are operators of Wando Philly station, which include a reception jetty with 240,000 metric tons, monthly capacity though, eight liquefied petroleum gas plants, three low bl blending plants, three aviation depots, and 12 warehouses. The allegation is that NMPC paid a cash 
amounted to $325 million. That's 140 billion naira for the acquisition of Oando branded retail filling station managed by OVH. But some of the acquired assets are alleged not to belong fully to OVH. Them say, them say, oh, so OVH Energy only has about 94 filling stations and over 100 filling stations were leased. I beg, lawyers, I won't ask you now. Do you sell what you lease? Can you sell what you lease? Anyway, make they peel the yams small, small, see the hot. Now, the shwashwa inside the matter, we say, Noel Oil, Noel Oil Limited was registered and incorporated in Nigeria around February 2023. And within eight months, they bought OVH Energy free of charge as there are no documents to show that money exchanged hand for the sale of OVH within a few weeks of that purchase. NMPC in October 2023 bought OVH Energy from Noe Oil for $140 billion. And the owners of Noe Oil also are alleged to be consultant to be an MPC. So the question now be say, Noe Oil bought OVH for free. And then NNPC bought it for 140 billion. The question: Who valued the company? Now the answer we see the way since money we see the here. Just like the 2.4 billion illegal obligation when people they collect for CBN until the CBN new CBN governor did a forensic audit. Now instead of NNPC Limited running the business of OVH, now OVH they run the business of NNPC Retail. As even Mr. Stockman. An expatriate and former executive officer of OVH Energy emerged as the new managing director of NMPC Retail. Oh boy, things they happen for this country, Sha. Even though the merger has not been completed, according to NMPC, OVH is still trading in their name, but he already running NMPC Retail while collecting product in the name of OVH and spending proceeds from that transaction. To run their own operation while sidelining NMPC staff saying the transaction had not been completed. Well, some people don't petition House of Representatives for the matter. But while they are waiting for investigation of the House Committee, I can tell you nothing will come out of the matter. As the House of Rep Committee will just collect their own share and move on. I have experienced these things. That's why, even though the NMPC is the only one importing PMS, that's fair. And selling at 58, 56, uh, 568 naira per liter in Lagos and 617 naira in Abuja per liter. Yet the marketers they sold to are selling at a margin of 50 naira, 17 naira, or even 19 naira in some cases, as nobody is asking questions. The cost of logistics cannot be more than 10 to 20 naira, except someone in an NPC, they share the profit with the marketers. Another question why is it that since the time of Mekanti Barrow, as GMD of NMPC to date, that Mele Kari is, the, is at the end of affair. We can't account for how much we have spent so far in exploring oil in the chart basin. What is the value of our collective fund that have been expended therein, and what are the benefits and results? Are the financials in compliance with regulatory carbon energy policies in the country? Another question. Now that NMPC is a private entity whose resources are borrowed and not subject to the scrutiny of the National Assembly, who is regulating NMPC? I questions, 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 begging for answer. On our website, on the watch, make on a like and share. Make other people know what thing they happen. The all the all you people within eight months, buying and rebuying, the deal goes on. Well, um, I'm no um, oil and gas expert, but um, from listening to all of that, we can already tell that um, there's a lot of um, shady dealings going on in the NMPC because how do you explain buying a company for free and then over um, time some other company buys it for, for billions of, billion billions of dollars. You can just already tell that it's just a lot of shady deals going on. And once again, nobody is willing to tell us where the money is going or who is taking the money or rather who even valued this company because the last report we got was that this OVH was bought for free but now the NMPC is back. just looks like one of those um, bogus transactions where you know they just randomly create um, you know um, companies to sell 
or rather companies with no value or with no known value to sell and just you know make money off it um comment in the comment section um those um oil and gas experts or people who um are very much um, how enlightened on this work. conversation but again uh looking at it from the perspective of nigerians what do you think nigerians should do people said protesting will not help the situation what then will help the situation please do indulge us at the comment section like and share so that other obedience will know what is happening until we come your way again tomorrow we remain your best obedient family tv bye for now